Hi, everybody. I would like to introduce today a new topic uh, for you. Uh, you know, from our lectures, we, we have already started calculus. For those uh, whom we haven't started calculus after linear algebra, but they, you know, we are going to start it in, in a week. So uh, it will be also beneficial for uh, all uh, students. Well, uh, so today we are going to uh, talk about the limits. Uh, this is, you know, limits is everything in calculus. So it's part of the uh, main essence of uh, such important parts of calculus like derivatives, integrals, and uh, series, and so on. You know, they are the pillars of calculus and uh, also uh, the parts of uh, applications which lay in the basis of other sciences, like uh, of other subjects, like differential equations, uh, engineering mathematics, and so on. So today we are going to talk about the intuitive approach of limits. But before I start, the idea of limits uh, cover, uh, it covers several, uh, several definitions. So if you want to know limits by definition, uh, we should be prepared that there are several definitions of limits and uh, they differ from one another in the meaning of uh, in the meaning of the limits. So uh, the fact is that the, you can approach the limits from different perspectives. Today we are going to talk about the intuitive approach. So we are going to first try to understand before giving the definitions, we are going to first try to understand, What's the limit? For this purpose, I'm going to use the book uh, by Salas, uh, which is called Calculus, One and Several Variables. It's a uh, 10th edition by Wiley Publishing. And I'm going to come right to the place where the limit starts. So the idea of the limit. Well, uh, for those who already are aware of this, uh, they know that the limits because most of you have studied in that school, that's why I mentioned it. So uh, the limit is written like this. Well, let's first understand what does it mean. So if this uh, limit exists, so it means that when x comes closer and closer to c, the function comes to a number which uh, we denoted as l. The function comes to the number which we call the limit. So it's a matter of approaching. Again, the, the word approach solves a lot of things here. So uh, instead of approach, by the way, we can use tense. So the word tense or approach uh, settles the main definition of the limit. So you have to be sure that we are not talking about the uh, C itself. So it is not, uh, do not mix it with the FC. So, we are going to see today several ideas on that, several pictures, and I, I'm going to try to explain here. Um, so we go closer and closer to C, we approach closer to C, but what happens to the function, uh, the closer we come to C, the function comes closer to one number L. And of course, if it is possible, if this limit exists, but there are some cases when limit doesn't exist. So we are going to can see that it doesn't exist cases today, so uh, let's start. Before we start, I would like to start with the few ideas here, uh, just for calculation of the limit. Let's suppose we, we are given the limit. For example, it's just a small example. X tends to two, uh, for example, X squared plus two. Uh, you know, if you want to calculate, this is the parabola. This is the function, which we call parabola. We know it from school. So if Instead of x, we are going to write 2, then, then it's going to be 2 squared plus 2. So it means that the function, the closer the function comes to 2, to number 2, then uh, we are going to get a uh, function, this function, which we can call as fx equals to x squared plus 2. This function comes closer to number 6, as we calculated here. It comes closer to number 6. I'm going to uh, do... 
uh, to explain it in detail in the pictures. So let's come come to this picture and try to explain what we mean here. So if you can see here, we have uh, point C. So this is the important part of the limit. Uh, we tend to see uh, from a left side and from right side. First of all, about the sides. So if we have here the point C, on the line, we don't have the luxury to come to this line from this side. They are all impossible. So, uh, or from uh, below. So only the, the only ways that we can up, come up to see it's uh, from left side, uh, we call approaching from left side and approaching from right side. So we can, if we approach from, if we come, want to come to see, we have only two ways. So uh, let me delay these uh, ways which fail here. And so on the line, if we have the line number line, real number line, uh, we can come up to see from two directions, only from a left side or from right side. So now let's come back to our photo, our picture here. So in this figure, you see that C, X comes to C from left, left side. So let's, let's see what happens to the function. Limits, limits in this sense analyze the behavior of the function. So if x, if we take x, the function value for x is fx, you know. But if we come up to closer to c, then what happens? The value of fx, which is here, is goes and closer, closer to this number, which, which we denoted as l. So coming to c closer from left side makes the function come closer to or l from the left side. So uh, another option to come to, to see, we say that it's from right side. So if you come to see from right side, then the function value fx comes to uh, L from right side. And you see the closer we get, uh, the points come closer here to uh, number L. So obviously the limit here is L because from left side and right side, we come up to the same number. And by the way, the, the important fact here that in this limit, in this figure, we can see that limit is equal to FC. So this is the important part here uh, that we should we are going to discuss today uh, on this uh, video also. So now let's see at uh, three different pictures. This is this the first picture here uh, comes exactly what we have just seen. So X comes to see from left side. X comes to C from right side. So in this case, uh, the function value fx here comes to closer, you can see from arrows, closer and closer to this point L. And when we come from uh, C, so corresponding points which are here, they are coming closer, closer to this number L, which, which we uh, denoted here by L. This is the L here is the limit of the function. But what makes it interesting, the second figure, Look, uh, look attentively. You will see here a very, uh, a, a very remarkable, mark, a remarkable point here. So, at C, the function doesn't exist. So, C is not in the domain of the function. What does it mean? It means that we are not going to calculate. We cannot calculate F C here. However, let's see what happens to the limit in this case. So, if at X comes to C from left side. Uh, our function value, you see from arrows, they come up to L from, uh, you see, if we come left side, below comes to this point. And when we come uh, from right side, we are going to meet exactly at the same point, which is here, but which is not included in the, uh, in the range. This point is not included in the range because FC doesn't exist. C is not in the domain. So, in, for, but even though, even though that's important, I want you to pay attention to this fact. Even though L here is the limit, so L is going to be the limit, uh, X, uh, limit of Fx, uh, X tends to C uh, of Fx. So, uh, so you, you can see here, also C is not in the domain, the limit exists. So, this gives us the idea, an important idea, that having the number in the domain 
and calculating limits are not related. So you, you are not going to get a correlation between them. Anyway, let's see another one. In this, what's what makes it different from these previous ones? Here C is again in the domain. You see, we have got here the point which FC uh, we get in the domain. But however, however, the limit is L. Let's discuss why the limit is L, not the other ones. So when we come up to C from left side again, the function value, if we take from x from here, uh, by the way, we are going to talk about the uh, vicinity, the close vicinity of uh, point C. So the closer, closer left and closer right sides. So as close as possible, let's say this side of the limit. Uh, so fx comes closer and closer to C. You, you can see it whenever we come to approach to C from left side. And when we come to see from right side, the function goes to here, mainly not in this direction. It comes this direction. So you can see it's important. So which makes the limit against L. So even though the function is defined here uh, with uh, number FC, FC is in the range because C in the domain, but L here is not, L here is not FC. So which is important here to know. Again, we come up to idea that uh, function limit uh, does not depend on function value. So it comes up to this uh, idea in this picture. But in the first in the first picture, you can see that the function limit is equal to uh, fx, the value of fx. So uh, you can see the limit of the function can be the value of uh, the function at the point, or it cannot be. But how how they are called? How they how we can differentiate? How we define these functions? What 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 they what is the difference between them? Of course, there is a difference, and there is an idea which we call continuity. I'm going to discuss it in our next video. Continuity, and the ideas here with this one, with this one, and with this one with the limits, different limits, uh, the same limits, but different values and non-existing. So these ideas are closely related with the term continuity. So continuity is dealing with these six, but today we are learning only the limits. So uh, continuity we are going to learn in our next video. So again, let's do some uh, analysis of this exercise. You can see here we have x squared minus nine divided by x minus c. You know, this function is not defined at points C equals to three. And uh, this is the graph. You can see if we approach to C three from left side, we are going to get uh, coming to uh, closer to number six here, you see? Uh, we, we, we come closer to number six. So as we get closer from right side to C, so again, the function value, which is here, if x comes closer to, again, the same point six. So it gives us the idea that uh, left limit and right limit, they are equal, which makes the limit of the function equal to six. We can be sure of the uh, limit analytical uh, explanation of the limit. So limit x tends to three, x squared minus nine. So we don't need a graph actually for this purpose. So it's going to be limit equals the limit x tends to three. We can factorize uh, here on the numerator and uh, we can do the canceling in the, here or in the denominator. So you can see x minus three are canceled. We get actually here uh, limit uh, x tends to three, uh, limit x tends to three, x plus three. So when, when we have x plus, we have here no, uh, no barrier here. We can calculate c is x equals to 3 here. So it's going to be 3 plus 3. We just substitute instead of x3. It's going to be 6. So uh, the limit is 6. But again, this function f, if we write is as the function fx equals to x squared minus 9 divided by x minus 3 is not defined at six. So it's going to be F3 doesn't exist here, doesn't exist. But you see the limit exists, it's six. So that's that's the main important part of the limit. 
which gives us the idea that the limit exists uh, even though the number cannot be in the domain, should not be in the domain, it's not important. So again, I would like to add to what I said, the fact that about the limit existence. So we said that if we come up to the point from left side, let's denote it as minus here, the limit extends to C from left side of X is equal to L. If this is equal to L, limit extends to C from right side fx, uh, let's call it again, if we suppose that it's L, then we see the idea that limit x tends to C from left side, fx is equal, limit uh, x tends to C from right side, fx. So actually they are both equal to L. This means that the limit exists. So in this case, our limit exists limit at point C exists, so it's going to be fx, uh, which is again L. So uh, in order for uh, for the function fx to have the limit, we are going to have a left limit and right limit. So the left limit and right limit should exist, and uh, moreover, they should be equal. So if these two conditions hold to, then uh, we are going to get the limit at the point. But I'm going, I'm going to explain it in our next lesson, in our next video, in detail with, again, figures and pictures. So uh, do not hesitate to watch the next videos which are related to this idea. Uh, so thanks, thanks for watching the video. See you in our next lessons.